Welcome to ATCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. Today we are going to discuss about a patient having lower back ache. Okay. Uh, we received a six, uh, 45-year-old female who has come with lower back ache. Uh, starting with the primary survey, patient had uh, airway patent, uh, able to talk in one full sentence. Breathing, respiratory rate was 18 per minute and saturation 98% at room air. And uh, bilateral air entry was equal. Circulation, pulse rate was 72 per minute and uh, BP was 130 by 80 mmHg. All peripheral pulses were felt and the disability GCS was E4, V5, M6, bilaterally people reactive and uh, exposure patient wasn't having any trauma, any bleeding, any active, any trauma like kind of situation. Mm. So this patient came with lower backache to the ear. What are the most two things, important things we should do in the primary survey? Uh, pain score. Yeah. What does the pain score? Pain, uh, coming to, uh, pain score was uh, 7 by 10. Now. So, pain is one of the fifth vital yes, signs. Yes. So, uh, we will have to uh, ask the pain score. And one more thing is that since patients complaining of lower back cake and if it is a elder male patient and all, lower back cake, one DD is? UT. Not UT. Iotic Iotic dissection. Dissection. So, yeah. we will have to, peripheral. in the circulation, we will have to uh, check for the peripheral pulses, pulses also. Okay. Mm. So, pain score was 7 by 7 10. By 10. Mm. So, at this point of time, we had given an analgesic of uh, NSAID mm. ketorelac when ampule injection IM was given. Okay, okay. And then coming to the secondary survey, mm. the patient had a past history of recurrent uh, lower back aches when uh, exerted in mm. the past, uh, but was never evaluated in the past. Uh, today, while uh, doing the household work, she had to lift the water container, while well, lifting the water container from the ground level to the cabinet level, mm. she had a uh, sudden severe acute back pain. Mm. Okay. And uh, the patient was uh, unable to walk because of it. On working, the pain was increasing mm. and the pain was uh, radiating to the uh, right leg and the lateral aspect of the leg it was radiating. Mm. for which she had come to the hospital uh, emergency. So, if we are getting a pain, patient with any sort of pain, what is the type of history we will be the asking? Site on set care. Uh, we will be asking the site. So, this patient is having lower right. midline right. pain. Okay. Then, onset. Mm -hmm. Onset was uh, secondary to the taking, uh, onset check two hours back, uh, the event was after taking the bucket okay. full of water. Then, character yeah. was uh, mm. This was dull aching pain. Dull aching pain. Sometimes it will be pressure like pain. If it is like te tearing like pain, we will have to suspect dissection, this thing and all. Then radiation. Radiation. Radiating to? Lower limb, right side of lower limb on the lateral aspect. Okay. Specifically. Okay. Then, uh, then uh, with time, it is progressing, improving or not. Mm -hmm. Then if, if at all, if, it, uh, if the pain is still there, we will need to ask whether it is continuous or on and mm -hmm. off pain. Then we will have to uh, ask the severity. Severity we need to ask whether it is uh, affecting the patient's um, daily okay. activities uh, and we need to score that one. Then we need to ask the aggravating and relieving factor. So what worsens it? So uh, whether it is worsening while bending forward so, or whether it is improving with rest. What are the pain which will improve with rest, back pain? Usually the... This Lower back pain, which is spinal pain, will improve no. with rest. If it like is like sciatica. spinal fracture and all, uh, when we not. lie down, uh, it, 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 if, it, if they are lying on a spine board and all, it will have pain. But otherwise, if they lie down, the pain will subside. Okay. But uh, if it is like malignancy related back pain and all, it will worsen at night. Okay. So, uh, that thing, uh, aggravating factors, relieving factors and associated symptoms. Why associated symptoms are important? To differentiate between either an infection or a cancer causing this or a trauma. Mm. Causing this. Yes. So, we have, we have to ask for a recent history. This is a young female, 45 year old middle aged female. So, um, this patient can be having some inflammatory, uh, this looks like a disc prolapse yes. or something like that. So, uh, we need to ask for the inflammatory history, any other joint pains are there or not, any skin lesion, in psoriatic arthropathy and all, there can be skin lesions, uh, morning stiffness, these things we need to ask. Then, if you are suspecting malignancy, we need to ask for weight loss yes. history, any known malignancies. These things are not okay. Uh, then coming to this uh, patient uh, comorbidities, there are no co no known comorbidities, no any allergy to any medication. Mm -hmm. Apart from that, now coming to the examination part of that, uh, the patient initial inspection there were no any swelling mm -hmm. found. The other 
along the spine and next uh, on the uh, palpation there is no any tenderness to any point specific tenderness was in present mm. and uh, patient uh, to localize the disc pain we have to perform the this motor sensory mm. test in mm. regarding the motor test the patient uh, was so first we have to inspection look that look. is the, that is no abnormality mm -hmm. was felt palpation you have palpated the spine so where was the tenderness no like uh, it's in the lower back in the sacral region l4 l5 region that tenderness, tenderness was there so okay then uh, special test we allowed to do examination and special, special test, test we allowed to do okay in the so examination you, are, component, you yeah. felt that there is tenderness over the l4 l5 region so uh, what now so l4 l5 we are if we are suspecting some disc compression or spondylolisthesis and not uh, where which nerve root will be affected ideally the can next nerve root would be really affected. affected so if it is disc prolapse between l4 and l5 the l5 will be yes, affected okay, okay. What examination did you do? Uh, yeah. First in the general examination, a specific examination, we will do this straight leg raising test, SLR mm. test. Here mm. the patient would be asked to lie in the supine position mm. and individually each leg would be asked to be elevated till mm. maximum of 70 degrees. Mm. If uh, there would be any disc herniation or disc impingement on the nerve roots, mm. the concerned nerve would be painful when we are So extending. we are not actively lifting, we are not asking him to lift, we are passively lifting, lifting the leg. Mm. Okay. Mm. So, uh, if uh, so that each uh, nerve root whichever is getting compressed would have a particular uh, de pain dermatome mm. like in L4 if the L4 nerve is being impinged we will be having the pain across the lateral aspect of the lower mm. leg mm. and if it would be an L5 it would be on the sorry L4 would be the anterior aspect L5 would be the lateral aspect and S1 would be the posterior aspect of the mm. lower leg mm. okay that so, uh, this patient, so when will we tell the SLR is positive? When they complain of the pain in the yeah, so lower half of the, like below the knee, rather than if they say it's at the hip, that would not be considered as SLR Okay. Positive. So, whenever the patient is lifting uh, and if the pain comes in the first 40 degree, then we can consider it as positive. Oh. Okay. So, um, any side, it will, if it is positive, then we will consider SLR as positive. positive. Then what else will we check? Then we will check for the motor weakness and mm. the sensory deficits mm. and, Mot and uh, vibration position. reflexes. Reflexes, mm. reflexes. Mm. Uh, like uh, each nerve uh, root has its own specific reflex and the motor uh, control. Okay. Like L4 has the control of the extensions of the quadriceps. Mm. L5 has the control of the dorsiflexion of the great toe and S1 is the plantar flexion of the great toe. Mm. At the same time, regarding the sensory uh, thing, in L4 is across the patellar region, L5 is the lateral aspect in the calf lateral lower limb and uh, S1 would be the posterior side and the dorsal part of the foot. Mm. Dorsal and lateral part. L dorsal and lateral part of the foot. Mm. And uh, regarding the reflexes, L4 has the knee reflex on that, mm. L5 no specific reflex but S1 is again ankle reflex. Okay. So, uh, if a patient, mostly the uh, disc prolax will be L4, L5. So, you are suspecting L4, L5. So, if uh, pertaining to L5 when you are checking, you told there is no reflexes. So, there won't be any reflexes will be normal, normal in this patient. Then only problem will be in the sensation yes. and the power of the external halus, uh, extensor halus is long. Yes. So, when you compare the extensor halus longus of both sides, if L5 is affected, the right side, as here the right pins, side. Uh, as the right side is involved in this patient, that side, motor, uh, deficit, motor can be deficit will be there. And one more thing is that L5 will also supply the web, web. first web space. So, first web space will be affected and the extensor, extensor halus longus will be affected in L4, L5 lesion. So, that is because the L5 nerve is getting affected. Effect. Whereas, if it is L5, S1. Uh, then S1 would be affected. S1, S1 function is the plantar flexion of the hmm. greater. So, plantar is. flexion will be gone. Then? The sensations in the dorsal aspect of the lower limb and the lateral, lateral, lateral aspect, aspect of the foot will be, uh, foot foot will be gone. gone. Then one more. Reflex. reflex, ankle reflex. Uh, ankle reflex will be. These three things will be there. Okay. 
Uh, uh, next, uh, coming to the like uh, in such cases uh, as in uh, acute onset back pain, lower back pain, mm. the initial emergency management would be the pain management mm. and further uh, imaging if there is any emergency condition such as if the patient is also complaining of urinary retention mm. or urinary incontinence, fecal incontinence, mm. then we can suspect uh, epidural compression syndromes, mm. which is a composition of the like coda equina conus medullaris. In such cases, emergency wise, MRI contrast radio imaging would be required for notifying where the lesion is. Okay. So, before going to investigations, we will think about the differential diagnosis. So, before going, this patient, before going into what, here we are suspecting something related to the spine. It can be extra spine legs also. So, what are the DDs will you have? when We can divide it into like spinal and abdominal causes. Abdominal causes, emergency wise, first thing you have to do that is aortic dissection. Mm. Apart from that, even pancreatitis will have the pain radiating to the back, even mm. pyelonephritis is... Mm. So, uh, in the abdomen, there can be pancreatitis, pancreatitis. female patients, so cholecystitis can be there. Then... Uh, endometriosis. Endometriosis can be there. Then Any pelvic inflammatory Sometimes disease. the peptic ulcer, posterior peptic ulcer can also have that. Then, uh, um, the KUB part, KUB part, there can be pyelonephritis, UTA, yeah. obstructive uropathy. Yeah. Renal calculate. Renal calculate. But yeah. usually there will be paraspinal, but if the patient is unable to look mm. at properly, we can say it is lower back pain. Mm. Then one more extra spinal is the skin. Sometimes the mm. dermatome can uh, be affected. Sometimes say, if the uh, patient is having herpes zoster virus infection and all, that will affect that dermatome. That area pain will be there. Then spinal? Spinal we can divide into traumatic and non-traumatic. Mm. Traumatic will be like like mechanical, non-mechanical. Mechanical because of the strain and such cases, spondylolisthesis, herniated disc. Mm. What is spondylolisthesis? Spondylolisthesis is the uh, the spinal, uh, lateral processes of the spinal body would be riding each other. Like mm. it, will, it will somewhat like a slipping, slipping, slipping of the vertebra. So, the uh, uh, vertebras on the top will be slipping on to the distal vertebra. one. So, um, uh, mostly it will be anterior slipping. Spondylolisthesis can be there then. And uh, uh, this uh, congenital uh, abnormal spinal deformity, kyphosis, lower doses. These all are mechanical lower back pain. Non-mechanical would be cancer related, neoplastic mets being in this spinal mm. or any infection or what are, what are um, uh, malignancies can affect primary or secondary primary mostly it would be a second like uh, some distant neoplasm having mets into the spinal mm. so uh, we have seen many uh, cancer patients in the ER so which all uh, malignancies uh, which all cancers have spinal mets multiple myeloma uh, that is primary bone malignancy multiple myeloma is a primary bone, bone malignancy. malignancy then uh, osteosarcoma these are primary bone malignancy and prostate secondary uh, and prostate, uh, prostate and these kidney are the RCC. main uh, then kidney rcc can be there pancreas uh, can be there then lungs thyroid these are the secondary causes of spinal mets that is one mm. cause then uh, Infections of the spi spinal, mm. that is osteomyelitis, epidural abscess, mm. or even spinal hematoma, epidural hematoma. Hematomas. Then discitis, discitis also can mm. cause. Then some non specific low back aches can also And Another thing is rheumatological causes mm. uh, like uh, ankylosing spondylitis, psoriatic spondylitis, and uh, reactive arthritis. Mm. So, when we are suspecting this, we need to ask questions. Uh, mm -hmm. Like that, the stiffness questions we need to ask. Then psoriatic arthropathy, skin lesion, these things also can be asked. Then, depending on this, we will have to plan on the investigation. Mm -hmm. So, if we are suspecting in terms of an aortic dissection and all, then we will have to go for an ultrasound. Okay. okay. Oh, okay. Uh, so, ultrasound should be done for yes. that. Then, we can do some blood tests. When will you do blood test in patient with back pain? We have discussed some causes. Like uh, if we are suspecting infection, infection, like osteomyelitis, these things and all, we will have to do Cons. some blood test. Then the inflammatory markers, okay. CRP, rest of the things, we are suspecting an inflammatory Cons. cause. Then uh, X-ray, when will you do X-ray? If you are suspecting majorly, X-ray is uh, evident when if you are suspecting a traumatic fracture or spondylolisthesis, mm. in that X-ray would be helpful. Mm. But uh, the gold standard would always be MRI with contrast so that uh, we can so see when the So in X-ray, what all things we will be able to make out? If so the if, discs, if, like mm. the gaps between the vertebral body, if it's narrowing or if there is any vertebral osteophytes, 
Okay. We will be fractures. able to see the fractures. We fractures can see mainly. the anterior uh, wedge compression fractures can be there, or the burst complete fracture. burst fracture can be seen. Then the uh, as you told, the spaces can be seen. If it is like an osteoporosis and all, we will be able to see the fish mouth like appearance, appearance because of the uh, that thing. Spinal mesh can also be seen as light occlusions, but we cannot be confirmatory with the just an X-ray. Mm. Then in case of angulation spondylosis, fusion of the so vertebra, straightening spine. of the vertebra, these things can. Can also be seen in an X-ray, uh, but the ideally, uh, if in order to de uh, know what is compressing or if the nerve roots are getting compressed, we will have to go for an MRI. Okay. So, was MRI done for this patient? Uh, uh, this patient, uh, as it is a recurrent, uh, he is having even the past history. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a uh, workup wasn't done, so we went further with the workup and we got an MRI contrast with the whole spine, mm -hmm. with lumbar spine. Screen, whole spine screening with lumbar spine. Mm. What was it? In that L4, L5, there was disc herniation. Okay, okay. Then so what was it? Mm. Then uh, the patient was admitted under orthopedics for the further uh, uh, decompression to be done by them. Mm. Uh, but in the further follow up, the patient wasn't taken to the surgery. Mm. He was given a trial, or she was given the trial for uh, mm. uh, like exercises and uh, treatment for pain management mm. if, uh, if it, uh, considering that even if it fails with that then they would go ahead with the surgery okay so if a patient comes to our ER with a lower back cake so what do you think the priority is first uh, ruling out the emergency condition like aortic dissection mm. would be the major and second one and second cordae equina like epidural compression syndromes like which who is having even the urinary retention mm. so we in the history we need to also ask for the history of whether there is any urinary incontinence mm. or any retention mm. bladder incontinence uh, sorry uh, bowel incontinence mm. or retention any sexual dysfunction mm. this also should be asked and, and anesthesia. saddle anesthesia. anesthesia we need to ask whether the patient is able to feel the buttocks region so that also should be ruled out so we need to find the cause of back pain and uh, th then the pain should be addressed okay if there is any history of fever mm. usually it is not significant that the spinal infections have a high degree of fever there will be only low degree of fever but if there is a background of fever with immunocompromised state then we should even consider infection being Mm. There and get the blood test and rule it. Okay. So what is the what are the red flags of backache? Urinary. Ah, oh, no. Red flag you can remember it as a um, clue with eight red flags are there. So if at all the patient is having associated these symptoms, we need to consider it as something serious. Okay. So eight things are there. Um, you can remember it as tuna fish. Mm? T for trauma. U for unexplained weight loss. N for any neurological abnormalities like any uh, bowel or bladder disturbances or any sensation, paresthesia, numbness, weakness and all. A for age more than 50 years. Okay, so trauma, unexplained weight loss, neurological abnormalities, then age more than 50 years. And then fish. Fish means history of any fever. Fever, in, that is something related to uh, fever. Then I for... Uh, uh, S for use of steroids and H, for, H is for um, history of uh, malignancy or any chronic diseases. Okay. Uh, I is like inflammatory yes. conditions, I think. Okay. And these things should be uh, checked and the red flags should be uh, um, checked and monitored. Okay. Anything else? Uh, in this, like the treatment component wise, uh, mm. the ideal choice of painkiller analgesic would be NSAIDs. Mm. And even when, if you are to discharge the patient, we can give NSAIDs and discharge the patient like mm. ibuprofen of 400 to 800 mg TID. Mm. But the only disadvantage of seen in the long term usage of NSAIDs causes upper GI bleed. So mm. better to give a proton pump inhibitor along with the NSAIDs when we discharge such patients from the emergency. And in elderly patients, NSAIDs can cause renal failure. Renal failure. Too. Mm. Apart from that, opiates are not at all the ideal drug because they can be uh, like a uh, Chronic usage can be seen in the opiates and they are addictive also. Mm. Then another thing is that um, the cord, there can be other bowel problems like constipation, constipation. these things can also Side be. Effects mm. of the drug. And the other, uh, uh, new, like uh, in case of the muscle relaxants can also be used 
if mm-hmm. there is a, along with that uh, back pain if they are considering muscle spasm mm-hmm. and uh, pregabalin and gabapentin are the pain medications given usually in the neurological pain management mm. that is mostly in case of neuropathies neuropathies yeah. diabetic neuropathy hypertensive yeah. neuropathies and all and we can even try serotonin norepinephrine reuptake inhibitor like duloxetine 30 mg once daily we can give when we discharge the patient okay okay if steroids was previously tried but mm. in acute setup steroids will not have a role unless it is a traumatic or infective cause where we can use pulse steroid dosage that type but on a regular lower back ache we no need to consider using steroids as the medication okay anything else thank you